Let's talk about Season 2 of The Cuphead Show, Netflix's latest addition to the crazy world of Cuphead and Mugman. This is going to be an interesting one, as for the first time on Honest Review, I'm going to talk about a follow-up season to something I've previously discussed. In my Honest Review of Season 1, some main points I came away with were that I generally enjoyed how the animation style was a cross between the charm of the game, while done in a more cost and time effective manner. I wish that I got to see more characters from the game though, except that they wanted to build up to their appearances, and I thought overall that the level of humour could have been slightly more tailored towards an older audience, and that the episode concepts for the most part played it a bit safe. So let's have a scout of season 2 to see if it's an improvement, a drop, or much of the same from what we've seen before. To do so, I'm going to share my own personal thoughts and feelings. I'm no expert, I'm no critic, just an ordinary guy with an opinion, so if you want to share your own honest thoughts in the comments, whether you agree or disagree with mine, then feel free. As per all honest reviews on Unleash the Ghouls, there will be major spoilers ahead. So season one ended with Cuphead and Mugman in jail, and in the final episode, Miss Chalice was revealed. That season came before the release of The Delicious Last Course, which fully integrated Miss Chalice as a new form of the legendary Chalice, and as a playable character. Chalice pops up a couple of times throughout season two. In all honesty, at times, I can find her slightly irritating, but not enough to completely bother me. In terms of other DLC stuff, we don't really get a proper look at any of the DLC bosses as main featured characters if you were hoping for some. Thankfully though, we do get some really nice inclusions of some more original game bosses, some used more than others, but it's great to see them finally at least. We've got Verna Vermin, who becomes a pest in the cottage, Sally Stage Player has a brief appearance, Baroness Von Bonbon comes in as well well as Sugarland, and I loved how she was characterised like a person on a sugar high being unpredictably crazy. Oh, and we get the brilliant pairing of two characters teased in the show's title sequence, Captain Briny Beard and Calla Maria. I lost it when Maria's voice clicked in my brain as Natasha Dimitriou, because I absolutely love what we do in the shadows, and Nadia is my favourite vampire in all of that franchise, so for her to become a part of the Cuphead show, it was great. Perfectly cast. The entire Briny Beard and Maria episode was fantastic as well, and it is a great example of how I feel the show on the whole grabbed and ran with a lot more fun and outlandish ideas in season 2. Here, Cuphead and Mugman climb aboard a seemingly abandoned pirate ship, in the dock from Perilous Piers by the way, and they accidentally send it out to sea during a sword fight, and find that Briny Beard is aboard who wants to set sail to reunite with his beloved, who turns out to be Calamaria. Not only are both of those bosses a lot of fun here, but with the longest run time of the season 2 episodes, this one felt a little more grand and epic. Combining that with the landscape of the sea and islands and caves, it definitely gave me those Popeye meets Sinbad vibes I discussed in my season 1 honest review. In terms of other oddball episode concepts, much like the broken handle episode from season 1, here we get a lot of simply creative ideas that are developed to see how far they can last, and a lot of episodes here worked really well in doing that for me. My favourite example of this is from Dead broke, where Chalice, able to turn into a ghostly form, teams up with Cuphead and Mugman for a good old fashioned bit of con artistry. Chalice haunts buildings, the boys pose as ghost hunters to capture her and then demand money for doing it. The idea in itself is inspired and funny, but it goes one step further when they attempt the scam on a genuinely haunted house. This was a series highlight for me, and generally a lot more episodes in this run were unique and memorable compared to the first season. My favourite episode here, and the most I've genuinely laughed in this show to date, came from the episode I Scream Man. <laughs> Get it? It's a pun. Sadly, no Gregory or Bingo Bombs to be seen, but regardless, this was another of those simple ideas stretched out to the max. While trying to have a dirty fantasy about him and Calla Maria, which in itself is a more adult-centric humour I wished more of, Mugman keeps getting interrupted by an ice cream man parked outside the cottage. And over time, he continues to irritate Mugman to a point it starts driving him insane. A couple moments comedically caught me off guard here. One is where Mugman pins the ice cream man down and threatens him, so he reaches for sprinkles 
calls to blind Mugman. I thought that was brilliantly executed. And then after Mugman upsets him by shouting at him, when the ice cream man drives off, his van music now plays in a minor key. Like, the van itself is sad about what's happened. Oh, it was just a fabulous bit of subtlety that I didn't expect. A lot of season one's humour was either rather standard or a bit in your face, whereas here, many moments were well played. Such as in episode one, the prison episode, which carries on from the previous finale. We get some establishing shots of the prison with a harmonica playing in the background, then cuts inside to reveal there's a living harmonica playing itself in a cell. It was that almost reverse fourth wall effect where what you think is incidental music suddenly becomes part of the world. And that's like 20 seconds into episode one, so already I knew we were off to a stronger start. Just little details worked so well here for laughs, like Cuphead and Mugman now have stubble and black and white striped straws. Then when trying to dig a tunnel with a spoon, the spoon breaks, so Cuphead uses his head to dig. Those moments all served up some giggles from me. And I love that across the board they've injected some more ridiculous humour in there that complements the daftness of the Cuphead world. When trying to jailbreak, the boys are punished with breaking rocks. Then after another attempt, they're punished with spending a night in the box. And then, after trying to escape again, they're punished with spending a night in the box while breaking rocks. It's just the right kind of silliness for me that made it work. Don't get me wrong though, I don't think season 2 was perfect throughout by any means. A couple episodes didn't really bother me. I thought episode 2 with the angry mob coming after Chalice was a very weak drop after how good the jail episode was. And there were definite peaks and troughs here, but I think that even season 2's weakest episodes were still stronger than most of season 1's. And the fact there's at least 4 or 5 episodes here I had so much fun with and would happily re-watch on several occasions, that's a good sign for me. It's a definite step in the right direction, with some of the same problems still there, just much less of them, and many improvements made in general for me. The humour is more refined. I don't find Cuphead and Mugman as annoying, which is something quite a few people brought up last time. They didn't really bother me before, but now I'm satisfied with the way they've been characterised, and they went more off the wall with the episode concepts, which I'm well happy with. If I had to deduct some points here, it's that sometimes the show forgets its own strengths. It's integrated a continuity where previous storylines and events are brought up now and again, which I really like, and it even gives context as to how Briny Beard got his two wooden legs, but one deviation from that strength that stuck out to me was the Ball Boy episode. Cuphead and Mugman fall out with each other, and so Cuphead seeks to find a new brother, and comes across Ball Boy, a purposely shriekingly irritating character, with a Bill Skarsgård Pennywise-like expression, who winds up being insane and threatens the boys. The episode ends on a cliffhanger with them in hospital and Ball Boy poses as the doctor, coming to get them. Next episode, it just starts afresh. I was kind of pumped expecting a two-parter here, and I thought Ball Boy had enough in him to expand a little further than just a one-off character. He could have been more of an adversary, but it all just got dropped right away, and to me, that was a lost opportunity. Another issue I had on a personal level which bugged me last time is how criminally underutilised King Dice is. He barely shows his face here, though I did love him scatting like a jazz artist while chasing Cuphead and Mugman around the hair maze. That was a good episode, by the way, with the devil summoning his demons to try and get Cuphead's soul, even resorting to bringing out the four horsemen while Mozart's DSE ray plays. Oh, brilliant. Oh, and speaking of classical music, I'm a big fan of Calamaria's song being inspired by Carmen's Habanera, plus her brushing her hair with a swordfish. Mwah. There's even an entire episode dedicated to classical music when the famous musician Ludwig appears. His character reveal was so exaggerated, I couldn't help but nearly die with laughter. To quickly talk about the animation, there were even more blends of physical props and animation cells and further rotoscoping techniques, such as Briny Beard's ship navigating around shipwrecked waters with a stop frame effect, and in the Sugarland episode, we have a physical background with the Baroness and Cuphead walking in front. I just adore that style of animation, and it's always good to see for me, no matter the era it comes from. Overall then, I think season 2 was a vast improvement. It still had a few issues here and there, but they weren't enough to disappoint me or distract me from the enjoyment I took from it. Season 1 didn't take enough chances for me, sometimes was a little bit bland, yet here you've got Cuphead and Mugman being turned into a gummy bear and a gingerbread man. It just feels like the 
team behind the show had a lot more fun with it. It's hard to say whether or not they took critical feedback on board, as it takes a hell of a long time to animate 13 episodes like this, and it's not even really been a long time since the end of season 1 and the start of this new season. If they had all these episodes in the works prior to season 1's feedback, then fair play to them for identifying the changes they've made, but if they did listen to the feedback, then also hats off for creating a much more well-rounded, memorable and thoroughly enjoyable show. Of course though, that's just my thoughts, what did you think of season 2 of the Cuphead show? Good, bad or meh, better, worse or the same? Let me know in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, a cheeky sub would be much appreciated. I've been Connor from Unleash the Ghouls and I shall see you next time for another honest review. Cheers out! Thank you.